Our blood carries our genetic coding. Throughout many scriptures, including the scriptures of the Holy Bible, we see references to how sacred our own blood is. But before we go any further, you know what to do. Please hit that subscribe button and give us a like. As always, a very, very special thank you to all of our patrons. If you would like to join our Patreon community, there is a link down in the description box below. Welcome to Esoteric Atlanta. My name is Bryce, and today, by popular request, we are going to be talking about bloodlines. Human beings are very complicated creatures. Although human beings are not the only species to carry blood, we are probably one of the most complex. So many things in your world dictate who you are, your constitution, and your personality. Every single person created by God is created in his or her own unique way. After all, the spirit of a person the soul of a person isn't even connected to that person's physical being. However, the blood that runs through your vein is part of your life force. Without that blood, you would not be here. Just like the air we breathe, your blood is one of the most important functions of your body. But did you know that all these different blood types carry different personality traits? Just like your birth sign or your Ayurvedic dosha, you can learn a lot about who you are, what you're good at, what your tendencies are, by your blood type. There are about 33 different classifications within each person's individual blood. And yes, that number 33 is not lost on me. We also have 33 vertebrae in the spine, unless you are Rh negative, and then you could have 34, just like myself. But for 99.9% .9 of the human population, there are only two classifications we worry about when looking at our blood type. The first is the ABO antigen, and the second is the rhesus factor antigen. Now notice I said 99.9% .9 of us. There is a small figure of people who have such a special blood type that there are only 43 people known in the world to have it. We'll cover those people at the end of this video. So let's first look at the ABO antigen. The ABO gene is found in chromosome 9, and this gene establishes which blood group someone will belong to. An antigen is a substance that provokes an immune system response and it lives on the surface of the red blood cells. So people who have type A blood carry the A antigen, people who have type B blood carry the B antigen, and people who have AB blood carry both A and B's antigen, and people who have type O blood carry none of these antigens. Now, like most things on our physical body, we inherit our blood type from our family, hence why it's considered a blood line. Again, this blood carries your genetic coding. It's also the substance that is responsible to help bring healing, oxygen, all sorts of good stuff into your vital organs as well as your muscles. Both the antigens A and B are considered to be co-dominant antigens. For example, my blood type is O negative. Now we're going to get into the positive or the negative next, which is the rhesus factor. But for now, we're just going to focus on the particular ABO gene. So I am O negative. My sister is B negative. My mother is also B type blood and my father is an O type blood. Now, because the O-type blood does not carry any antigens, it is considered to be the recessive blood. However, with my father pairing with my mother, who is a B-type blood, 
there is a possibility to have a O blood type child, which was myself. And of course, with my sister, a B type blood, obviously she got that from our mother, where she carries the B antigen, but I do not. Now, both my sister and I are both RH negative. So if my sister were to need a blood transfusion, I would be able to give her my blood because my blood doesn't carry the B antigen, nor does it carry the rhesus factor, her blood would be able to accept it. However, my blood would not be able to accept blood from her because I don't carry the B antigen. So if I were to accept a blood transfusion from my sister, it could kill me. Now I'm just using this as an example to try to explain the antigen aspect of the ABO. Again, with the rhesus factor, we'll get into that next. Now, since my father is O-type blood and my mother is a B-type blood, there is no way that my sister or myself or any other children coming from those two people would ever carry A blood or A B blood because that A antigen does not exist in either of the parents. So we're going to look at some personality traits for people with A blood. I'm going to go in alphabetical order because that seems fair. Now, the interesting thing about type A blood is that it does seem to be equally distributed all over the earth. With certain blood types, we can definitely see a higher concentration in certain areas of the planet or with certain ethnicities, but with this A blood, it does seem to be pretty equally distributed. Type A blood is the second most common blood type. Now, if we're looking at this spiritually, type A blood is type one human. People with type A blood tend to be tense, stubborn, earnest, responsible, patient, reserved, sensible, creative. They also tend to be good listeners, well organized, they love to follow the rules, and because of that, they're prone to OCD. Type A blood also tends to have higher levels of cortisol in their blood compared to other blood types. This means that people with type A blood tend to become stressed out a little bit easier than other types of blood, and this is something that someone with type A blood should be aware of. This means that you are also prone to cardiac issues and possibly diabetes. Type A blood people are also more prone to being affected by allergies. As we've mentioned before, many people follow diets that are specific to their blood type. I will include the video where we talked about that down in the description box below. Now I'm gonna be honest with you guys, for my diet, for my blood type, I don't follow the blood type diet. I do better with the dosha diet, which is another video we can do later on if you guys want to know more about doshas, because when we get to my blood type, the suggested eating for my blood type is the exact opposite of how I actually eat. I actually eat more like an A-type person. An A-type person does really well with a vegan or a vegetarian diet. In fact, if you are type A and you need to lose weight, it is suggested that you do not do the low carb diets, but rather do more of a plant-based diet. In fact, type A people should be avoiding meat. They should also be avoiding wheat and corn, and they should make sure to eat a lot of fruits and vegetables and whole grains. Now, obviously this is not medical advice. I would really feel more comfortable if you actually went and talked to your doctor about this. This is just general information for this video. And as always, there are always exceptions to the rules. Now, as I said, type A blood is the second most common blood type in the world. 36% of the human population carries type A blood. Famous people who have type A blood are George Bush, Adolf Hitler, Jet Li, Britney Spears, and Richard Nixon. Type A bloods also have a higher percentage rate of alcoholism and are more prone to gastric cancer. So it is highly suggested if you're a type A blood that you don't smoke, although I would probably make that recommendation for all blood types. Now A, B, and AB blood types are also 60 to 80% more likely to experience blood clots than a type O blood person. Now, because type A does to be high stress, 
the exercise program suggested for type A people is one that is low intensity. Now, oddly, they did put yoga in there, but real yoga, like yoga in India, is very high intensity. So whoever wrote this particular article I was referencing obviously doesn't know that much about yoga. They're looking at the bastardized yoga here in America versus where it's really from in India because the yoga we do is very high intensity. So I would suggest maybe looking at some Tai Chi or walking in the neighborhood, or again, talk to your doctor about the ex best exercise plan for you. So let's move on to type B blood. People who carry type B blood have 50 times more good bacteria in their gut than any other blood type. They're typically easygoing. They're normally the people that tend to go with the flow. Very opposite of the A type. The A type is very kind of OCD and really organized, whereas the B type is just really kind of happy-go-lucky, which is my sister. My sister is very much that way, and she herself is a type B blood. They are the least likely to struggle with things like depression. Doesn't mean that they can't struggle with depression. So if you are a type B blood and you do feel like you're struggling with depression, please go to the doctor. This is just a general statement. They're often considered to be very positive people, if not sometimes considered to be pretty innocent. Type B people also tend to do things at their own speed. And even though this can be a very positive quality because they obviously don't get super stressed out, like again, like A types do, this also can be a pretty negative aspect of the B type as well. Because B types are also not really good at taking orders. But nonetheless, type Bs are usually pretty tender-hearted, very down-to-earth, and they don't tend to get sick that often, which again, they have 50 times more good bacteria in their gut than any other blood type, so that explains a lot with them not getting sick that often. But they don't like confrontation and will do anything to get out of confrontation, which again can be a very negative aspect for the B type person. Type B blood is not one of the common types of blood only 8.5% of the population carries type B blood. People that carry type B blood should not eat corn, lentils, tomatoes, peanuts, sesame seeds, chicken, or wheat. They do need to be eating green vegetables, eggs, with a little bit of meat, and low-fat dairy. Famous people who are type B blood would be Vince Young, Leonardo DiCaprio, and Jack Nicholson. Now for exercise, people with type B blood should be looking at low cardio, like tennis, which is really funny because my sister, again, who is type B, is a really good tennis player and spent her whole life playing tennis. So she very much matches her blood type. Spiritually speaking, type B blood is type two human. Again, type A is type one human and type B is type 2 human. Type AB blood is one of the rare forms of blood type. Now again, type AB blood carries both the antigens of A and B. Because of this, type AB blood can be very, very complicated because they carry both personality traits of an A and a B person. And as we've seen, a type A blood type and a type B blood type seem to be polar opposites of each other, where a type A blood type is literally a type A person where they're more OCD, have a higher propensity of stress, and the type B blood type person is like a type B personality trait where they're really relaxed and more down to earth. Now with AB, we have both of those traits within the same genetic coding. Type A, B blood types can be very outgoing, like a type B personality, but also can have their moments of being shy, which is typical with type A blood types. They're considered to be very popular amongst their friends and can often be the life of a party. They're often very exciting people for an AB blood type. They're often considered like the fun friend or the fun aunt or the fun uncle. 
but because of the A antigen, sometimes type AB blood types have a really hard time handling stress, which again makes them very complicated creatures because they are outgoing. And typically we think of outgoing people as being people that can really take the bull by the horn and handle stressful situations better than most of us. They are often seen as humanist and typically are pretty logical people. They're also very loyal and trustworthy and most of the time very composed. Type AB blood types tend to have very low stomach acid and so it is suggested that type AB blood types avoid alcohol and caffeine and smoked or cured meats. Type AB blood types tend to do really well on like a seafood diet and a diet that consists of dairy and green vegetables. Famous people who have carried the AB blood type are Barack Obama, Marilyn Monroe, John F. Kennedy, and Jackie Chan. For exercise for an AB bloodline, dance is considered a great exercise as well as walking and hiking. Type O blood, again, I'm type O. This means that you don't carry the A antigen or the B antigen in your blood. Type O blood types tend to be go-getters. They're pretty daring and can often be seen as high achievers. Type O blood type also have a lot of energy, a lot of prana in their body, and they're most likely to offend type A blood types. They don't mean to, I think it's just a clashing of personalities. Type O blood types are considered to be very kind and very generous people and tend to be very optimistic and loyal. Type O blood types, because of their high energy, do well with a lot of hard work and they're often considered to be very peaceful people. In Japanese culture, where they actually use blood types a lot to determine personality traits, they often call type O blood people as warriors. Type O blood types are very honest people and they don't like dishonesty, although type O blood types can be very jealous and sometimes are too busy looking at the big picture that they have a hard time focusing on the small details. Type O blood people typically have tummy issues, which I absolutely do. That's also a part of being Rh negative as well, which we'll get into next. And it is suggested that type O people follow a high protein diet. Again, I'm O negative and I'm a vegetarian. When I was a kid, anytime I ate meat, I would get like really sick, like throwing up very, very sick. And so I stopped eating meat a long time ago. But I believe that my issues with meat don't really have to do with the fact that I'm an O blood type, but have more to do with the fact that I'm rhesus negative within my O blood type, which we're going to jump into next. Now, famous people who are the O blood type are Queen Elizabeth II, her son, Prince Charles, Paul Newman, Elvis Presley, and Ronald Reagan. Now for exercise, it is suggested that type O people do very high intensity exercises, which is what I do. I'm a very, very active person. The yoga I practice, Ashtanga yoga, is very high intensity. I also do high intensity bar classes, ballet type classes. And for a very long time, I was a long distance runner. Now spiritually speaking, type O blood is blood of the gods. And when I say gods going forward, I'm talking about extraterrestrial life, in my opinion. Now, when it comes to spiritual propensity, that is found more in the rhesus factor, which is the second antigen that we're going to look at. Now, to know if you carry the rhesus factor or not, your blood will be either positive or negative. For example, if you're A positive, that means that you carry type A blood, so you carry the type A antigen, with the rhesus factor. You are positive for the rhesus factor protein in your blood. Now, if you're A negative, that means that your blood type, again, carries the A antigen, but does not have the rhesus factor within it. This is super, super, super important. Everybody needs to know if they are positive or negative. So again, if you're looking at your blood type, to know if you are positive or negative for the rhesus factor, you will see a little negative sign before your blood or a positive sign before your blood. 
85% of the world's population is rhesus factor positive. 15% of the world's population is rhesus factor negative. Most women were aware if they were positive or negative because if a woman is rhesus factor negative and her husband or partner is rhesus factor positive, it can cause complications with childbirth. For a woman to get pregnant with a rhesus positive baby, which is the dominant, the rhesus positive, her body will try to get rid of the baby. Many scientists in my deep studies of the rhesus factor have called people who are rhesus factor negative a different species than those who are positive. One of the most challenging things for scientists from what I gather from my research is figuring out where the rhesus negative comes from. The name rhesus as in rhesus factor comes from the rhesus monkey. It is one of the factor that scientists use to try to prove the legitimacy of evolution from the monkey. But people who are Rh negative don't biologically connect into that evolution. For a long time, many people believed that Rh negative people carried a mutation. However, as we move forward, people are starting to understand that it's not a mutation. For most of civilization, scientists believe that it started in Sub-Saharan Africa and the Fertile Crescent. So the top of Africa and the Middle East. Makes sense, right? If you look at the Bible, Egypt all up into the Middle East is where all these stories happened. However, the rhesus negative bloodline appears to originate from Europe. Majority of people who carry the rhesus negative in their blood are people who are of European descent. This does not mean that a black person or an Asian person won't be RH negative. We do have people who are black and Asian who are RH negative. It's just more common within white people because it's a numbers game. That's where this bloodline allegedly started. In fact, 45% of Europeans are RH negative. 3% of people with African descent are RH negative, and only 1% of people with Asian descent are RH negative. Because the RH negative is the recessive trait, it would take a long time for it to spread. So you can't have somebody who is RH dominant from both parents have a baby with someone who is RH negative and expect to also have an RH negative baby. It just wouldn't work. The RH dominant person, if both their parents are RH dominant, and this RH negative person, both their parents are RH negative, then the baby, that baby is going to be RH positive but carry the gene of RH negative, and then the next generation of that baby were to mate with someone who carried the recessive gene would then possibly result in an RH negative baby that was perhaps not of European descent. I hope that makes sense. And so we're seeing this evolution from the European area of this particular bloodline spreading slowly across the world. Again, this is not an, a race issue. The RH negative is not picky about what kind of ethnicity it clings to. It's just more common with white people or people of European descent because that is where it started. Now, as I said, a lot of scientists have called RH negative people a different species. I know that the scientific community is very torn about the RH negative antigen within certain people. Again, some scientists will say it's just a mutation, whereas again, other scientists are trying to look for a different creation story for the RH negative. Many people who are religious believe that the RH negative bloodline comes from the Book of Enoch, where we also see a bit of this story in Genesis, when the Watchers or the fallen angels came to earth and mated with humans. Now in my faith, I absolutely believe in angels, but I also do believe in extraterrestrials. A lot of Christians do not believe in extraterrestrials, and that again is completely up to you. 
But if we look at the RH negative people potentially being only from fallen angels, then that means that you're looking at 15% of the population carrying demonic blood. And that is simply not true. Whether you are a good human or a bad human is totally up to you and has nothing to do with your bloodline. I tend to believe that the RH negative bloodline does come from extraterrestrials. If you watch the interview that Tom Numbers and I did with Wano Savin a couple of weeks ago, Wano Savin spoke about the Tower of Babel, which I found to be absolutely fascinating. It appears that the people who were building that tower to get back to heaven weren't necessarily building a tower, but were trying to build a space force to get back home. It seems that our ancient ancestors understood that this planet with its firmament around it was perhaps a prison planet, a planet that was under a war between God and Lucifer. If you look at stories of the Anunnaki or the Draco, you hear stories of these beings coming to earth and mating with humans in order to create a slave planet, a prison planet full of beings that would just do the biddings of these other extraterrestrials that were perhaps more advanced than the humans were. And this could explain why we have the RH negative bloodline. This is also fascinating because most of our elite, as in our presidents, our prime ministers, a lot of our actors, our royal families, are all RH negative. They value the RH negative over the RH positive. They see the RH negative as being purer than the RH positive because it does not carry the rhesus factor. In my opinion, there is no such thing as a better bloodline or a worse bloodline. It's just bloodlines. But then again, I'm not a psychopath out for world domination, so... Now, people who are RH negative also tend to have digestion issues. So again, as I said, I'm O negative. So that means I have a double whammy. The O blood type tends to have stomach issues and then you add the RH negative on top of it. And wow, I have some really bad stomach issues. RH negative people have a lot of food allergies. They're very, very picky eaters. That is 100% true and they are naturally resistant to HIV, which we know HIV AIDS allegedly came from maybe a monkey type situation and the rhesus factor is the same protein. So that makes sense to me that people without the rhesus factor would be more resilient to HIV. We're also more resilient to smallpox and the plague. And we are more resilient to this thing that's been going around our planet in 2020. I think y'all know what I'm talking about. I can't say it on YouTube, but we as RH negatives are very resilient to that as well, which would make sense if this thing that's been going around our planet in 2020 was released by the elite in order to do what they do best and try to dominate the world. If they are all mostly RH negative, of course, they're gonna release something that they would be naturally resilient to, right? Y'all know what I'm saying. Because the rhesus factor is mostly found within people of European descent, most people who are RH negative tend to have blondish reddish hair and blue or green eyes. Now my natural color is like a blondish reddish. I highlight it now and I have blue eyes. Now that doesn't mean that you could can be that doesn't mean that you can't have brown eyes or brown hair that's possible of course it's possible this is just a generalization one of my good friends is a black woman who is also rh negative but ironically she also has a little bit of a red tint to her hair but her eyes are definitely brown so it's not a hard fast rule this is just a generalization most people who are rhesus negative have a very low body temperature the average body temperature is 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit, whereas people who are RH negative tend to be around 96. My resting body temperature is at 96, and it has before in the past dropped down to 92. Now you can say because the Draco or the lizard people, as they like to say with the royal family, are cold-blooded, and that's why our body temperature is lower. I tend to do think that that has something to do with it 
that there is some type of inheritance there from wherever the gene comes from and that's why our body temperature is lower. But I guess in time the truth will come out about that. Now again, RH negative people do tend to have an extra vertebrae. As I said in the beginning, most people have 33 vertebrae. RH negative people tend to have 34. I have an extra vertebrae. We also can have extra organs. I know somebody who is RH negative that has an extra kidney. I have an extra urinary tube, so you have your kidneys in a tubes that run to the bladder. I have two on one side and one on the other. It doesn't do anything. There's nothing special about it, but that is typical for an RH negative to have some sort of mutation within their organs. RH negative people also tend to have astigmatism. If you look at the back of an RH negative person's eye, there is a diamond shape versus a regular person's eye won't look like that. Now again, a lot of people will say that's because this bloodline comes from the Anunnaki or the Draco, aka the lizard people. But it is said that this eye issue that's labeled as stigmatism is what gives RH negative people the ability to see things that other people cannot see. Because you see, it's more likely for an RH negative person to have spiritual phenomenon as far as paranormal experiences or seeing extraterrestrials when other people cannot see them. Is this because they inherited something from an extraterrestrial many, many years ago when they came to this planet? I believe so. Something that is interesting about RH negative is they cannot be cloned. Now again, this makes sense because we know that the elite have been cloning people for a very long time. And of course they would want to be able to not be cloned themselves. They want to do the nefarious stuff to the other people, not to them, because they view themselves as special because of their origins, if that makes sense. Now I know cloning is a big topic, amongst a lot of truthers right now, but if you look at some of the elite, they actually haven't been cloned. They have body doubles, and you can tell that those are body doubles, not clones. Another organization that really honors the RH negative is the Freemasons, and the RH negative from some people is believed to be the Holy Grail or the Holy Bloodline. Now, if I were to have a child, I frankly would prefer my child to be RH positive. RH positive people are just a lot healthier than RH negative people. They don't go through the same issues that RH negative people go through. I myself have been through every single issue that is associated with the RH negative, and it's probably because I am O negative, because the O negative seem to be a lot more potent in these weird type of issues than like a B negative or an A negative or an AB negative. So if you are RH positive, please count yourself lucky. I know sometimes people want to be that oddball, they want to be that different blood, but we're all special. There's no such thing as one blood type that's like more special than anybody else. God doesn't make junk. We're all special and we're all unique. So if you are RH positive, I am super jealous of you because you are way more healthy than I will ever be and your body is way more acclimated to this environment than my body is. Now spiritually speaking, it is said that O negative is the pure blood of the gods. And again, I use gods loosely. This, in my opinion, means extraterrestrials, but we know that our ancient man probably saw greater beings as being like a god, even though they were probably just aliens, because we know God, God is, is God. And these are just probably extraterrestrials that are intermingled within our species. So O negative, pure blood of the gods. O positive is mixed God and human, which is a very common blood type, O positive. O negative is a mixed God and human type one human. So you're mixed with the alien blood and also type one human. A positive is human type one, and this is very common, so you are 100% acclimated to this planet. B negative is mixed God, or alien blood, and human type two. B positive is human type two, again, very, very common. You are also very acclimated to this planet. A B negative is mixed God with human types one and two. And this is also a very, this is one of the rarest blood types is AB negative. 
from what I understand, Princess Diana was an AB negative, as well as some of the people we mentioned earlier, which would be JFK, would be AB negative. AB positive is mixed human types 1 and 2, and that, even though it's a human type blood, again, that's acclimated to this planet, is also a very rare blood type. So I hope that gives you more details and more explanation on these different blood types. So again, for yourself, sit down and figure out, first of all, what your ABO antigen is. Are you type A, B, or O? Once you figure that out, then go and look and see if you're rhesus positive or negative. Once you figure out those two types of antigens, you'll be able to look deeper into your own personality traits, depending on the ABO gene and the rhesus gene. Now there is one more blood type that we have to talk about today, and that is the Rh null. This is the absolute rarest blood type of all. Again, as I said in the beginning, there are only 43 people recorded on our planet to carry this particular type of blood. This also has to do with the rhesus factor. Now within the rhesus factor protein, there are 61 different RH antigens. For most people who are RH negative like myself, they're only looking at one of these antigens, which is the D antigen. The reason why they only look for that one antigen is because the D antigen is what's responsible for the immune response. For people who are RH null, this means that they are missing all 61 antigens. They are called the people who have the golden blood type. For most of our recorded history, it is thought that fetuses that were carrying the Rh null blood type would not survive into adulthood. But that all changed in 1961 when they found an adult Australian woman living with Rh null. And then by 2010, we had a recorded 43 different people who also carried the Rh null blood type into adulthood. According to my research, most of these people who are Rh null keep their identity private. This is because scientists are hounding them nonstop to study their blood. Rh null people have to be very, very careful with their lives. It's not like they can just get a blood transfusion. I mean, I'm O negative, so I'm like the universal donor, but I have to be, I can only get blood from other O negatives, and that's tough enough. However, for Rh null people, it's virtually impossible. A lot of Rh null people will go about twice a year and take their own blood to keep in storage just in case there is an issue and they need a transfusion and get their own blood. But for the most part, they have to be extremely careful. Now, I understand everybody's need for privacy, and I respect the fact that these people have kept themselves private, but it is interesting to wonder, where did the Rh null come from? If they want us to believe that we evolved from monkeys, and if they want us to believe that the Rh negative, the basic Rh negative missing the D antigen like myself, is just a mutation, then what about the Rh null people? They carry none of the antigens that seem to be from this planet. And that is truly my interest in blood types. When I started to figure out my own blood type, it answered so many questions for me. Sicknesses I've had, paranormal experiences I've had. Knowing that my great, great, great grandfather was born into the English royal family and knowing that they are obsessed with bloodlines and knowing that I carry the same bloodline as Queen Elizabeth and her son, Prince Charles, all of a sudden, all the dots connected. What is it that the elite know about where we came from that they're not telling us? And it's understanding our blood, our life force, a key to really truly understanding who and what we really are. And is it a key to understanding how magnificent a species God created us to be? Now again, I hope that was entertaining and informative for all you guys. This has been one of my most requested videos and I really hope that it's a good starting point for each of you and your own self-discovery through your blood. 
Again, I am not a doctor, so please don't take anything said in this video as medical advice. And also, again, remember that each blood type and rhesus positive and negative are all just generalizations by looking at statistics of a general population of people who carry each individual blood. I will also place a link in the description box below for a book that got really popular that revolved around eating for your blood type. Again, for me, I don't eat for my blood type. I eat more for my dosha, but whatever works for you works for you. And I do think that there is a lot of truth to different foods being better for different people and vice versa because each of us are unique in our own way. All right, guys, let me know in the comments below if any of that made sense or if there was any aha moments for you in this video where you realized some of the personality traits for your blood type matched you. I hope you guys are all having a fantastic day. This weekend, I am going to be putting up a bonus episode. It's going to be a little bit of a concert from the Flying Mystics from my boyfriend's band. Hopefully that will drop this weekend so you guys can have a little concert to listen to if you're into that kind of music. If not, no worries. Thank you so much to Josh McKay for doing our music. If you would like to purchase our opening song, again, there is a link down in the description box below. And thank you to Todd Roderick for helping me get this video out to you all today. Have a wonderful Friday and an even better weekend, and I will talk to you soon. Bye.